welcome back to my channel and thank you for stopping by. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you. Today what I'm preparing for you is risotto cakes made from leftover risotto that I had. I made patties out of them, put them in the freezer, pull them out, let them thaw come at room temperature, and I'm going to fry them. I have two strip steaks here and I have some sea bass. I'm going to be making sea bass, strip steaks, sauteed spinach, risotto cakes, and that's going to be topped with a mushroom cream sauce. I'm seasoning my strip steaks with some salt, pepper, and seasoned salt. And when I buy seasoned salt, when I bring it home, I always taste it just to see how salty it is. So I'll know how much to use. And I'm using an olive oil spray to coat my meat. Always start with a dry piece of meat also. Dry meat gives you brown meat. Anytime you're wondering why your meat is like grayed over and it doesn't brown, it's probably because it's too wet. So once you wash your meat, always dry it off before you season it. And here I have my risotto cakes. I'm just taking them out of the uh, saran wrap. I made individual cakes, put them in saran wrap and, st and stuffed them into a Ziploc bag and froze them. I always make a little extra risotto so I'll have some cakes in the freezer. It makes a nice lunch also. You can fry these up and put some sour cream alongside of it. It's delicious. Here I have my sea bass and I'm going to season that with the same season. All purpose seasoned salt and pepper and I'm making some slits into it to help it cook evenly and to help my season get into it. These are the inside also. I've let my steaks cook for about one and a half minutes and then I turned it around one quarter of a turn to get those nice grill marks on it and let it cook for an additional one and a half minutes. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And for medium steak, you want to let it cook about eight to ten minutes for a medium rare steak. Here I have two shallots that I'm slicing up. And if you don't have a shallot, you can use an onion, add a piece of garlic, and you get about the same flavor. A shallot is kind of a mix between onion and garlic. And this is for my cream mushroom sauce. I'm going to slice up some shallots, slice up some garlic. And then I'm going to add my mushrooms, some thyme, a little bit of butter, and some olive oil. I have a bulb of garlic here and I'm adding about three big cloves. And I always cut that little wooden bent off where the root is attached to the garlic because it's usually kind of woody and not good to chew. And also it's a little bitter. So always cut that little piece off when you're using garlic. Unless you're using garlic in the springtime, which is right out of the ground, before the skin even has time to harden. And you can use the whole thing. It's just really, really lovely. And it's very mild as well. I have some green onion here. 
and I tried to cut these into manageable sized pieces. Cut them all the same size before I start slicing them up. It just makes it a little bit easier to cut. Here I have a package of mixed mushroom. Adding olive oil, thyme, and when you're working with thyme, always just strip it backwards. Hold the stock up and strip it backwards and the leaves come off pretty easily. I've added some salt and pepper to that. I'm adding coconut oil to fry my fish in. I always try and use a healthy oil when I'm using a lot of it. So I'm using coconut oil and just a little bit of canola oil. I'm stirring my mushroom here and I'm going to add a little pat of butter. And that's about a tablespoon of unsalted or salted butter, whatever you want. I've added my fish to the saute pan and I'm going to let that cook on one side for about three minutes. I flip it and let it cook on the other side for the same amount of time. I'm chopping up some fresh spinach here that I've already washed and rinsed. And dried, I mean, wash, rinse, and dried. This time of year, spinach and bok choy and vegetables like that have a lot of sand in it for the winter time because of the way that it's grown. So you always want to dunk it in a lot of water. You want to put it in a bowl or put it in a clean sink with a lot of water and you want to pull the vegetable up from the water. Don't try to put it in a strainer and run water over it because you'll still have a lot of sand in it. If you do it that method, where you just dunk it and let it um, in a bunch in a lot of water and pull it up from the water, all the sand will fall to the bottom. So I'm flipping my fish here and I'm going to baste it a little bit. Anytime you have the time to do it, when you're frying something in, a, in shadow oil, it's not. And you want to try and baste the ingredient because that helps to cook evenly and faster. And I've just added some cream, some heavy cream to my saute pan with the mushroom. And if you don't want to add cream, you can add some kind of a stock, vegetable stock or a chicken stock, or you can just leave it dry. It's delicious this way. You can put this over toast in the morning with the egg. It's delicious. You can put it on top of any kind of meat. It's lovely. So right now, I'm you know, basting my fish because I have a little bit of free time while my olive oil is heating up in that skillet for my risotto. It keeps the top nice and crispy while the bottom is cooking. And it also speeds up the cooking process. My fish is finished. And as you can see guys, it doesn't take a lot to eat clean and eat whole foods. There's nothing in the box here, there's nothing in the can. The only thing I'm using is this cube garlic. It's really not hard to eat clean and eat whole foods. We have steak, we have fish, we have mushrooms, vegetables, 
rice and our risotto cakes. Everything is a whole food. Nothing is out of a can or pre-made in a box with preservatives in it. You know exactly what's going into your food. It doesn't take that long to make this meal at all. It took me about, I would say, 25, if that, 25, if 25 minutes to complete this meal from start to finish. So I've let my risotto cakes brown on one side and flip them. And when it, when the brown starts to rise up, you can see that it's, it's ready to flip then, just like a pancake almost. I'm adding some Parmesan Reggiano cheese to the top of my risotto cakes. Everything is done now and I'm about to plate. There are my steaks, they've been resting. You always want to let your meat rest for about at least 15, 10, 15 minutes because all the juices will go back into the meat and when you cut it, as you can see here, all my juices are not running on to my cutting board. And look how juicy that meat is. It's very, it's a very important step to let your meat rest before you cut into it. You can't pull it out the pan and cut it right away if you want juicy meat. I've spooned my spinach down to make a bed for my meat and my risotto cake. I'm propping a steak up along the risotto cakes and I'm gonna top it with that lovely mushroom sauce. A nice addition to the mushroom sauce would also be leeks. If you have leeks, you can use that instead of using onion and shallot. And here with the fish, I'm just cutting it in half with scissors because it's so easy to cut through the bone with some scissors. And I'm going to plate that a little bit differently, push the spinach up alongside. So I'm plating this a little differently, pushing the spinach up against some fish, topping it with the mushroom sauce. And don't be afraid to treat meat this fish the same way you treat meat in this dish. So there you have a whole clean meal, you know what's in it. Everything is a whole food, nothing boxed or out of a can. Very easy to do and so delicious. Please give it a try and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much.